Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cooking with Tyler. I'm Tyler. You thought that I wasn't ready to do a cooking show because it's early in the morning, but I am, and we're going to do it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Tyler. I'm the co-host of the Ride Rehab podcast here in WDWNT, and I'm joined by my digital sous chef, Colleen. Good morning, Good morning, everybody. Colleen. I just threw that in the garbage, basically, so I'm just going to go kick that out of the way really quick. Anyways, uh, with us being stuck at home, we thought it would be fun, by we, I mean me, thought it would be fun if we cooked up a little bit of a Disney recipe right here at home. So we are making Le Cellier's, that's in the Canada Pavilion, you know, that restaurant you don't go to in that pavilion you don't go to because there's no ride in it. Le Cellier's Epcot's Bacon Cheddar Cheese Soup. So this is a recipe I've eaten tons of times when I go to Disney and I tried making it at home and I'm like, this could use some improvements. So I modified the recipe and I'm gonna be cooking that revamped version of the recipe today. If you're watching on YouTube and anywhere else, you should be able to see like a comment or a description below that says how to get started with this, like what ingredients you'll need. If you're cooking live with me, drop it in the chat. If you're just like making some food because it's early in the morning, it's like lunchtime now, let me know what you're eating. <laughs> um, I guess I should just get started. Off we go. So I'm making Epcot's cheddar cheese soup, which I have almost all the ingredients out here right now, except milk. I also am gonna be making a steak because we need something to eat with it. And then we need a side, so I'm making some roasted potatoes. So the first thing I'm doing is going to be making some of these little gem potatoes. They're super tiny. They're all a bunch of different colors, and I have water already boiling, so I'm just going to get on with that. And if anyone is like, ow, I just already injured myself by splashing myself with hot water. <laughs> if anyone has any, like, questions about cooking or just about the parks, we don't know when the parks will open. So don't ask us. We don't know that. We know literally everything else, but we don't know that. I should explain. We're making roasted potatoes, but I'm boiling them first, uh, and I'll explain why, because let me just uh, turn up the audio over here, because there's a term called parboiling, when you partially boil something. The reason I'm doing that with potatoes is because I want the outside to be crispy, but I want the inside to be nice and soft. So after they're done in the water boiling for a little bit, we're gonna pop them in the oven, and then the outside, which is already partially cooked, is gonna like crisp up so much, but the inside's gonna be like the perfect consistency. Okay, so. We'll just get that started. In the meantime, I've got cheddar cheese soup. You're gonna need half a pound of bacon. Uh, I wrote on the recipe cut into sh pieces. Um, we might just throw this in the oven to make things go a little bit faster because I hate cutting bacon. It's it's slimy and it's there's too many like tendons and shit that you have to, I mean stuff. I forgot <laughs> it's very early in the morning and we're doing a family friendly show. Sorry about that. So we're gonna need bacon. We're gonna need one medium red onion, four tablespoons of butter or margarine. Don't use margarine, use butter though. Uh, one cup of all purpose flour, three cups of chicken stock, uh, one pound of old white cheddar cheese, half a cup of sharp Asiago cheese, uh, four cups of milk, which is in the refrigerator right now, four dashes of Tabasco sauce, four dashes of Worcestershire sauce, or Worcester. I actually have no idea how you are meant to pronounce that properly. Uh, some coarse salt, which is just any salt that's not super fine, like something that's flaky. Uh, pepper, and then three quarters of a cup of pale ale at room temperature. Uh, the recipe for Disney calls for moose head just because it's the most Canadian thing and also they sponsor them so they have to use it. But we're just using Alexander Keith's India Pale Ale, which is a Nova Scotian beer, so it's still Canadian. Uh, and then I also just got some garlic and some rosemary to go with the potatoes. Anyways, those are par parboiling right now. Let's get into the bacon then. I hate cutting bacon. It's absolutely the worst. 
it's juicy for some reason uh and it's so hard to like chop into pieces so if i can't get it chopping well i'm just gonna lay it out and throw it in the oven then we'll move on to the next step which incidentally needs the bacon so we'll just do this someone on instagram Colleen. wants to know if you're from canada Yes, I'm from Canada. I live north of Toronto in what we call Richmond Hill, which is the city just north of Toronto. Someone on uh, YouTube wants to know if there's a severed head on the top of your fridge. Yes, there is. <laughs> there is. It's a, it's a Halloween mask that I have stuffed with like uh, like a laboratory coat because I needed it for a costume piece for a uh, stage show that I did. There was supposed to be... So a, a bunch of rats that get their tail tangled up is called a rat king. And that's a real, actual thing that happens to rats in sewers and houses. Um, and we needed a rat king for, like, the show. And so we found this really awesome, creepy mask and we put a crown on it and we called it the rat oh my god it is so dusty <laughs> and we called it the rat king uh i would have kept that up there but it's very dusty and disgusting and i'm just going to the again uh oh, and then Mandy somebody beat is really curious <laughs> about your stone wall Oh, yeah. Um, oh, wow. This is cutting like butter right now. Uh, we looked at a bunch of different places in this building when we were moving in. And this was, this this place just had this wall here. Uh, it's like, it's probably like an inch thick. It's just like somebody put it like in front of the wall that existed. And... <laughs> One of the reasons that Thomas, my partner and co-host of Ride Rehab, wanted to move in here was because it had this fascinating looking wall. And it kind of went with like this kitchen backsplash, which was already here. Um, so yeah, that we didn't put that in. That was just here when we moved in. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, last uh, last summer, uh, ants started crawling out of it. <laughs> uh, so that's fun. That's it was gross. not fun. Yeah, they were they were called like pharaoh ants. So they they only wanted water, uh, and you can't like try and kill them because they're like in the walls. So you have to like leave like sugary poison out for them to eat, and then take back to their queen who will die, and then they'll die. So that's a real thing <laughs> that, that happens. That's actually how most, like, ant poison works. You have to take it back. In Florida, we have fire ants. Oh, God. That's probably even worse, right? Those hurt. Jared, I mean, like, you also have, like... Piled backsplash. <laughs> Oh, thank you. People like your Again. Mission, basically. <laughs> thank you. I feel like it's, this is the whole kitchen, by the way. Like, it's this one space I'm in, and that's it. I guess I, when I grew up, I had a lot bigger kitchens. Um, yeah, cutting this bacon is actually a lot easier, because normally I try and cut the entire thing. But, yeah. Uh, knife skills. Let's talk about that really quick. Um, here's how you want to hold your knife. Thumb here, finger close to the blade, and then when you're cutting, you want to keep your fingers like a little claw because you will not chop them directly. You will chop past them. That way you don't cut your flipping fingernail off. Someone's going to need to make a montage of me realizing I'm about to swear and not swearing. Oh, yeah, so this was the first step. I swore on Monday. I don't even remember what I was talking about. What was wait? What was the show that was happening though on Monday? Uh, we uh, ranked all the Disney movies. Tom had a list. Oh, and basically, we argued right. with him. And I don't know what oh, I was. Oh, so it was the about. attraction poster tournament again. 
That was that was absolute madness, the attraction poster tournament. I should have preached cut this bacon. Mandy wants to know what brand of knife you're using. E no, that says laser stainless. I have no idea. I had these knives for forever. It's basically a steak knife. Um, but I've never really cared about what brand it was. Wow, this is actually taking forever. So I'm going to see if I can speed this up. <laughs> uh, Courtney wants to know if you can go to a grocery store. Yes. Yes, I can. For, for her? No, like, are you, I think, are you still allowed to leave your house? Yes. Um, we've, we've been suggested to stay home. Um, but like, obviously you need to get exercise. So, you know, go exercise, go take the dog for a walk. Uh, all the, like the parks near us, like playgrounds are closed. And it says on the front sign of like parks that the park is closed, which I mean, like you can't stop people from going, but it's certainly recommended you don't walk into a park. Um, but yeah, grocery stores are open. Like we have Walmarts, but we also have like uh, local grocery chains. They're open because it's like a necessity that people shop and get food. Um, but they're limiting the number of people that go in the building at once. Um, so there's often a line just to get in the building, which feels kind of like a Disney thing, <laughs> like waiting in a line just to get in a in an area like Star Wars Land. Not even on a ride, but just in an area. Um, and they're also like, they're not limiting the amount of food, but it's just suggested like, please don't buy like 80 pounds worth of eggs because you know, like other people need that. Although flour is completely gone. Like for the one thing that's completely missing from all the shelves I've seen is flour. Interesting. I don't know, yeah. Maybe because people are like, I'll bake bread at home. Oh my god. So all this bacon is going to be the first thing that gets cooked on this recipe, by the way. Um, because we want to cook it in a pan and then keep the fat of it. And we're going to use the fat to cook the onion. Uh, onion is basically just going to completely melt away. It's going to be so soft, but it's just the base of what soup is. Most soup bases are onion. I never really liked onions. And then I took an arrow out of the meat. That's a Skyrim reference. Remember the video game Skyrim? No. Todd Howard is a liar. <laughs> but anyways... I'm just saying half this stuff because I know somebody's going to find it funny. Like, uh, we had a staff meeting uh, for WWNT, and they are like, Tyler is doing a cooking show. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know how that happened. And then everyone had to remind me, they're like, you wanted to do it. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know. But like, they're like going, are they Colleen? You went back through the messages and you're like, Tyler said on this date, <laughs> I want to do a cooking show. Like, I know I did. I know I said that. I was saying that at the meeting because I thought it would be funny. But I was like, oh, I, I don't know whose idea that was. It was a fun moment. Yes. I also enjoyed you know also in mean? the meeting, there was a whole argument about the color of orange bird. Yeah, and you, I thought that was dumb, but now that I see it, I'm like, yeah, that really is a little bit too red. We had this orange bird um, emoji. It's like a box. And it was like, basically. that's red. No, that's orange. It was this whole argument for like five minutes. It's like in Fiddler on the Roof. It was a horse. It was a mule. That's Courtney a said on the her roof. husband is laughing at your Skyrim jokes. Good. <laughs> At least somebody's laughing. I should clarify. Um, the the I'm actually like the joke of me like being tired when I came in 
I, I'm actually very tired right now. Uh, the last episode of Shit's Creek was last night, and then there was a documentary, and I stayed up until 3 a.m. watching it. So I only slept for like four or five hours, and then I woke up and I'm like, well, time to do a cooking show. Same also, I'm very hungry. I ate one egg before we started this. I also only slept like three or four hours. <laughs> Were you running a show last night, though? No, I was not. Oh, so it was just because you just wanted to? watching Netflix. Oh, nice. And what were you watching? I was reading Wikipedia. What were you watching on Netflix? Supernatural. Oh. There's 15 years of that. It should, you know, occupy me. Me. For a while. Mandy says, but you watch Back to the Future, right? Guys, I'm going to let you in on a secret. If I'm not running the show, I don't watch it. <laughs> not because there's anything wrong with any of our shows, but because I live this. <laughs> what was the... You said something recently that was funny, but also very true. Which was like, I was hired to be an assistant, and now I'm running a television network. <laughs> Or yeah. something like that. Yeah, that was basically what I said. I was, I was hired to be an assistant. I used to, like, you know, call the credit card company for Tom. <laughs> Does Tom have a problem with credit card companies? Where's our money? <laughs> I don't know. I like to believe that that happened. Okay, we're ready to go on the next step. So, okay. potatoes are four boiled. I have drained them. Um, and then I'm just going to let those cool off so that I can add spices to it and everything. But the very next thing we're going to do is bakken. So the first thing, grab a big old pot, like one of these bad boys. And we're going to start cooking up this bacon. I'm going to get the camera as close as I can without actually destroying anything. So this burner is currently hot. You just want it to be medium hot no need to put any oil in there because that bacon is already full of grease and fat and oil is essentially a fat that you cook in much like butter for example so we're just going to throw that right in there basically um and the bacon you will it's going to be cooking for a long time within the actual soup so bacon does not need that much time to cook just until the color changes um, you're probably good, like, like most meat. Um, bacon's like the only thing people like crispy because the crunch is good. But yeah, that's already burning hot, so I'm just gonna drop that in. You should hear a sizzle. Wow, that was a good sizzle. And just get that in there, stir it around. Not really you need to add any salt or pepper to this because it's basically going to get tossed in with a thousand other ingredients and then that's when you want to salt it. You can always add more salt. This disgusting pad here, we're going to clean this um, because we're probably going to need it for later. So the bacon can just sit there and cook out. On the bottom of the pot, it's going to stick. That's fine. We are going to later deglaze that. Deglazing is basically when you add uh, a liquid or like onions and you, you're basically going to scrape up all that good stuff at the bottom. You want that. That's cooked. It's rendered fat. It's delicious. So yeah, leave that cooking for a minute. I'm going to wash this and then we're going to shred an onion. The, re the original recipe calls for just chopping an onion, but I found that that made the soup kind of chunky, and I want like a smoother, creamier consistency of soup. So I'm going to shred the onion instead. It already smells like a Disney restaurant in here because there's like so many things that have been cooking and there's cheese sitting out and whatnot. Gonna try. This piece of paper is going to be soaking wet soon. Okay, bacon cooking oven's ready for the potatoes whenever. Let's shred an onion. Boomtown. 
All right. Onions covered in disgusting skin. We're just going to get rid of that. So there's like the stem at the top here. So that's holding the entire onion together. We want to keep that. Um, so this weird funky end over here, we're just going to like chop that end off just so we can peel it. Gorgeous. And I always like to have a bowl for garbage because the garbage is normally on the ground. So I just keep everything in the bowl. You can like cut the first layer of that off because the first few layers are kind of gross, but look how beautiful that onion is on the inside. Also red onions are really great to like dye stuff, like pickling it because it's got this like red hue on the skin. Boy, this is really effing hard to peel. Can I say effing? Is that okay? I think that's probably fine. So I live right beside a train track. So every once in a while, it sounds like my whole house is going to explode. <laughs> you could probably hear that, right? I don't really hear anything other than what sounds like normal background noise. Ah, well that just proves how good Yeti mics are. We are not sponsored or endorsed by Yeti. But their mics are fantastic. They are a good, cheap microphone. All right, so yeah, basically this is holding the rest of this onion together. Normally I'd show you how to chop an onion, except we're shredding it, so let's get shredding. This is a tedious process, and I'm probably gonna need to like leave the room at some point so I can wipe my eyes. Just give this a quick stir before anything else. Oh my god, this bacon smells amazing. I'm gonna do something... Shorn Force? I might be pronouncing that wrong, but he said, LOL, no, Tyler right. wants to swear so badly. <laughs> I do. On Ride Rehab, we are like... Ride Rehab, we call it a mature podcast because we don't know what we're gonna say. And going through and editing the podcast to remove all swear words before was such a tedious process. Um, so we just started keeping the swearing in because people just started to expect that there's mature content in there. Speaking of which, if you haven't listened to the new episode Ride Rehab, you should. Uh, at the beginning of the episode, we get demanded by Disney executives to do the Enchanted Tiki Room and the Country Bear Jamboree in one episode. So if you followed the whole unscrupulous... Oh, Crap. <laughs> and you bought the whole unscrupulous thing while it was happening. You're gonna want to watch this episode. <laughs> yeah, my eyes are burning like so much right now. And I probably shouldn't continue to use what is essentially a series of small edged weapons against my hand, but I'm almost done. I'm done. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna run out to the washer. <laughs> I'll be right back. What riveting content this is, right? Something to stop us now. I'll tell you how. We're gonna live on through it. Let's stay inside and spend our time taking things in stride. Good times aren't held at bay. Just stay away from the population and wash your hands to kill off those bacterial strands. Now we're trying to keep a little distance. It's for sure our best resistance to making things a whole lot worse. Come on, kids, let's all go down to the sink. Wash those grubby little hands of yours. 20 seconds. You never know, it might just save a life. Something has stopped us now, but don't you fret. It'll for sure get better. We'll soon be hand in hand, going down to Disneyland. Oh, won't that be so grand, though something has stopped us now. Cha-cha. Welcome back. I'm now free of onion smell. Thank you, Colleen, for having that song ready and queued up so quickly. <laughs> um, okay. The next thing we're going to do is take the onion that we have shredded, which, should, you know what? It's Passover. 
I know it's not a Passover. By the way, I didn't know it was Passover until like last night. I am not uh, a very good slash practicing Jew. Anyway, <laughs> and demonetized. I'm just going to clean this because we're going to shred up cheese afterwards. Um, but yeah, we're going to drop... Jeez, calm down, bacon. Oh my god, that bacon... Yeah, the fumes are still in my face, so... <laughs> we're going to drop this bacon... Or sorry, we're going to drop this onion into the bacon. And we're going to throw in a, two tablespoons of butter. Oh my gosh. I'll be, I'll be back in two seconds, don't cut to a commercial. Okay. Uh, let's have a clean towel. So you can clean your eyes from those bacon fumes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Again, riveting content. Anyways, onions in. And we want the heat to be very high because we're going to saute these. Saute just means high heat for a short period of time. We just, just want to make sure that they get nice and transparent because right now they are white. So the more you cut them, they look at transparent. I keep butter on a plate with a bowl attached to it so I can soften it up. And here's a fun thing. If you lightly uh, tap your knife against the butter before you put it in, you'll know exactly how many is a tablespoon before you put it in. I'm like, before you unwrap it and leave it to soften. So that's two tablespoons of butter in. Was it two? Four. It's four. I gotta put in more. Oop. Okay. So that's in, again, high heat. The butter is gonna help these onions caramelize. So everything's getting soft. See all that gross nonsense at the bottom? We're, we're gonna scrape this up with the onion once we get the butter in there. And all that delicious rendered pork fat is gonna be part of the soup. So yeah, high heat, stir it, and as we're stirring, you can see it's starting to come off the bottom. All that deliciousness is gonna get cooked into the onion. So yeah, high heat, let that sort of get a bit hot. After that, the next thing we're gonna do <laughs> is add in flour. Uh, so while this is happening, really quick, I'm just going to season these potatoes. So potatoes and then any kind of oil. This one is corn oil just because it was the only one that was available. You could be pretty liberal with the oil just because in the oven, which is a dry atmosphere, it's going to uh, absorb and all of that. And that's what's gonna make the skin so crispy. You can also be liberal with the salt because again, most of it is gonna get rubbed off on the parchment paper. By the way, if you're not using parchment paper when you're putting stuff in the onion, when in the onion in the oven, what are you even doing? Just a bunch of garlic. Parchment paper allows stuff to come off easily, as opposed to like what you might call it, uh, aluminum foil. So I've switched to parchment paper. Bunch of rosemary, not too much. Again, rosemary, or not again, because I never told you in the first place. Rosemary is an aromatic, which means that you want sort of the smell of it rather than the actual flavor or texture of it. Normally you'd have a bunch of springs of like rosemary and then you'd take it out. Uh, but we're just gonna keep it in there. I need just like a spoon. Oh my God, there we go. So mix this around, make sure all of these potatoes are oiled and covered in salt and pepper, garlic, and the rosemary. And we're gonna throw that in the oven on 400 for about 30 minutes. That sounds like a crazy amount of time, but these are gonna get so nice and crispy, it'll be delicious. All right, 35 minutes. Okay, Google. It didn't hear me. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep stirring but this. My, my Google in the studio heard you. 
<laughs> Isn't it like supposed to be like voice recognized or whatever? What? Isn't Google supposed to like recognize your voice specifically? So you can program it to be like, oh, you should specifically listen to this voice, but it'll answer like anyone who says the right thing. So like the Googles in the studio are programmed to my voice, but you know, they'll respond to anyone. Although they don't like Nathan. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny. It, but it's weird because they just will not do something with Nathan S. But somebody else says the same thing and they're fine. Okay, we're gonna put in a cup of oh my god, a cup of flour now. So the flour is what's gonna make the soup sort of have some substance. Otherwise, it'll just be a goopy mess. Flour is raw, so we're gonna throw this in here. And the flour is going to absorb all of the juices from the bacon and the onion and the butter. I'm going to take it off the heat right now because I don't want it to burn or anything. Um, and you're just going to stir it until the uh, flour is completely incorporated and you don't see any more white. It just needs like a minute in the pan to cook, basically. I have no idea if that made the camera look any better. Okay, the steak is, by the way, I've taken the steak out because you don't want it to be completely cold, otherwise the inside won't cook at the same temperature as the outside does, which is gonna get fried faster in the pan. So I have a steak just sitting out, ready to go. We're gonna throw that in on the pan when there's like 10 minutes left on the soup. Okay, so the flour is now completely stirred into the rest of the bacon and onion mixture. And now we're gonna whisk in chicken stock. Chicken stock is what's gonna make it a soup. Uh, just give this a quick shake in case some of it solidified and went to the bottom. So you're gonna need three cups of chicken stock. So just measure that out. I like the measuring cups that have the numbers on the top, so you don't have to go like, mm -hmm. you could just look at the top section of it. Okay. Three cups of chicken stock are ready. I'm just gonna grab a whisk. And we're gonna get this, in. we're gonna use a whisk because it's much thinner. It allows it to mix up a lot easier than just a spoon would. It's gonna start with a little bit just to get it started. You can already see it starting to come together and look like a gross creamy soup. I'm not doing it all at once because I don't want it to splash everywhere, which it's ultimately gonna do anyways. Again, gross, creamy mess. Start the rest. And remember, this is only the first part. We're still gonna add four, cup, uh, four cups of milk to this, and then a whole bunch of cheese. So stir that in. It looks kind of uh, liquidy right now. This is gonna change. It's eventually gonna get a lot thicker because we're gonna cook it out for about like half an hour. 15 minutes at a time. Okay, so that's in there. We are now going to bring this just to a boil. We don't want it to get any more boily because uh, then it will overflow and burn on the oven. So yeah, we're just gonna bring that to a boil. Once that's done, we're going to simmer it for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna shred some cheese. So just get this going. Hey, Colleen, has anyone in the chat said what they're eating or cooking right now? Uh, someone said they were having cookies. Oh, delicious. Um, let me see. I gotta scroll back. Um, so Mandy said she's making a cake. Ooh. 
Carl's eating cookies. That's Gary not said a lie. He's having breakfast. Portal reference. Um, Melon What's for and breakfast? Mouse said they can cook omelette superb avec jambon. I may be Canadian, but I'm not French Canadian, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Um, That's a solid burn to French Canadians, I guess. That was really the only people saying that they were making things. Uh, other than that, they seem okay if you swear, as long as you don't swear too much. Oh, okay. Let's see, we talked about ants. I mean, Just scrolling back through. I mean, swearing is something I get to demonetize. We should, should we, should we say that like? Not all our content is monetized. Um, there's like a huge thing with YouTube and people who make content for YouTube that it's like, oh, you can't say that. You'll get demonetized. Like, you could also just manually select something not to be monetized before you put it up. Um, like, you don't have to monetize absolutely everything. Sure. Also, like, the money you get from videos is not as much as people think it's everywhere else that people are there's another train everywhere else that people see your stuff and you know support you and things that's where some money comes from if you're getting paid for your work anyways we're gonna set this for 15 minutes every fifth every five ten minutes we're gonna check on it stuff in the oven is sizzling away so we're gonna shred some cheese i got here asiago Oh my god, that smells so good. Um, there's this little cap here that's just like some wax, basically. You you don't have to eat that. You can throw that out. Um, some cheeses that they are hard and firmed up so much that that like hard part on the outside you can actually eat that. That in particular is just wax though. Um, so let's get the shredder back. Got a bit of onion on it, but that's okay. Just pick that off. Does anyone know how to clean this side? Does anyone actually know how to clean this? The only way to clean this is with another one of these. One <laughs> on that side. Actually, wait, I have a brush. That should probably work. Okay, I don't know why I've never done that before. Okay, that's how you clean this. You use a brush. <laughs> that was not my joke. That was uh, James Acaster, uh, who's a fantastic comedian. Anyways. Speaking of Shit's Creek with Catherine O'Hara and uh, Eugene Levy, does anyone actually like that new Canada movie? Because let me tell you, I don't. <laughs> it's, it, I, it is not as entertaining as the Martin Short one. It's I can't really believe I'm saying it. I, it's weird that you're actually, like, we're going to make a new movie, but we're going to pick not newer comedians or actors in any way. And I, I'm fine with it being those two. I like, in a ride rehab episode, we made a video off of this. Me, Thomas, and Nathan all like we were suggesting what you do with Canada, and I was like, if you're gonna do something that celebrates like the history of Canada, but you keep it, we want to keep it funny, make it like an SCTV episode, like of a trip around Canada. So you have like Andrea Martin. And like Joe Flaherty, Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, Rick Moranis, like you get a bunch of those classic comedians who are still like relevant now and people know them. And then you make it like an SCTV kind of sketch show, but with like focusing on different parts of Canada or something. And it, but they, I guess Disney kind of listened to us, which is a joke we like to say, because I doubt that they're listening to our podcast. But I think we know 100% that Disney reads our website, so they're probably listening to our podcast, too. But it was just kind of um, weird that it was like, oh, we're making a new Canada movie, and it's like, but nothing about that was, like, new in so many ways. Like, I don't know. I think I said during, like, Park Center when that happened that even, like, the footage of Toronto is not new. Yeah, it's Like, because we can point footage. out, like, old buildings. No, yeah, it was just kind of boring. Like, if you're going to have those comedians, why are you not going to, like, use them to the best of their ability? Yeah. Like, they weren't funny. It was, it was purposely not funny, I think, because comedy does not age well. Certain comedy does not age well. 
I'm sorry, I turned this up to high instead of low, so I'm kind of having a problem over here. <laughs> I mean, talking about comedy not aging well, like, um, we watched a bunch of funny attractions where they are genuinely funny, like Timekeeper or um, Cinemagic. Like, those are talented comedy folks like Martin Short and Robin Williams and, um, oh my God, I forget her name. The mom from Matilda. Rhea Perlman. Yeah. Those are some talented comedy folks. And the comedy is like just the tiniest bit edgy kind of humor mm -hmm. where it is still funny and relevant. Uh, one more block of cheese to shred. Oh, so the two cheeses, that one was Asiago and this one is smoked white cheddar. The recipe calls originally called for just uh, sharp cheddar which has like a kind of old, it's called old cheddar in Canada. Um, although Kraft Mac and Cheese, which I think is a very Canadian thing, is called sharp cheddar, but I think it's produced mostly in the US. Um, but yeah, I switched instead to smoked and then I used the Asiago as a much sharper type of cheese. If you've never like, it, go to like a cheese shop and just like, I mean, go buy some cheese, but just taste a bunch of different types of cheeses. You'll, you, you can taste the difference. Like the smoky one definitely has like more of a nutty kind of flavor, but a sharp cheddar has been sitting and aging for a long time. So it's not a soft cheese. It's kind of hard in texture, but the taste of it, it feels like it's had the chance to mature. And so it has like a lot... The only way I can describe it is like a sharper taste, like milk. Like I'm about to bring in some homogenized milk, which has a higher fat content versus skim milk. Skim milk is, you can feel like it's like a crisp kind of milk. Feels like refreshing, but like a fattier milk, like a homogenized or whole milk is gonna like taste creamier than sharp. It's hard to explain taste palettes. Ratatouille does a good job of that through like, the visual of animation. Anyways, I'm very hungry. I'm going to eat a whole chunk of this cheese. Um, that's delicious. That was way too much cheese. I shouldn't have put all that in my mouth. Okay. So we got that already. Potatoes are sizzling away. This is going to continue to cook for another eight minutes or so before we add in the milk. So I'm going to take it out now. This is uh, homogenized milk, 3.25% milk fat. Um, so it's gonna be really thick and really creamy. It's good for soup, especially if you're like eating cookies and you want like something to cut the, the rich flavor, like totally use like a higher percentage of milk. I'm just trying to get through that cheese that I just tried to shove all in the milk. Um, nobody edit the word shove in my mouth for anything adult. Anyways, I'm going to give this another stir. Now might be a good time to like tell people what else is on today. So right now it's cooking with Tyler and then coming up later, today's Wednesday, we got Park Center at 9 p.m. Um, you might have noticed the parks are closed. So uh, I think Ben is still trying to figure out what is going to happen on tonight's show. I think we were going to do like a show and tell no, thing. I don't know if that's they haven't officially going to happen. They haven't done news in three weeks because they've been doing March Madness. Oh, yeah. I guess there is still like a ton of news happening. So, so they got stuff sense. to talk about tonight. We have certain, yeah, we were doing with March Madness. So we were sort of like recapping what happened on the bracket but i assume there's like a lot of stuff happening disney is still operating like their movie and television division like they're still making and putting out all the content that's on disney plus like the beginning of this or halfway through this month i mean the the animator for frozen is still like animating little olaf shorts at oh, home yeah, that are I like 40 that. seconds 
Those are actually pretty cute. And Josh Gad apparently voiced, voiced it from home as well. He's probably also bored. Everyone's probably bored. <laughs> Red Letter Media, a YouTube channel that we love, has, has said that like all these celebrities now are like, oh, nobody's paying any attention to me. What am I going to do? So that's why they made that like imagined video where they're all singing at the same time or whatever. Friend of Ride Rehab, Rob Plays, made the joke that like people are making fun of like Disney vloggers because like, oh, what are they going to do now? But like everyone seems to be like doing pretty well just because like some people who like Disney vlog, in particular us, I think, like everyone is already a talented individual um, and they're able to hold their place on camera without needing to resort to just pointing their camera at stuff in the theme parks. But they can still create some great content, like um, offhand Disney theme park history. Like I could just name a bunch of YouTube channels I like. We have an actual cooking question: Is the milk oh my better God. to use than cream? Um. Yeah, those are two different things. Uh, I'm not a chef. I'm not like a complete cooking expert. But cream has a much heavier fat content than milk does. Um, cream, you, I mean, soups that are like cream of blank are still made with milk because it's going to boil out. Cream is already like so thick. You don't want to put that into anything. I would say, um, I would certainly ask more of a cooking expert what the, or Google, like what the official difference between milk and cream is. Because honestly, I don't know, but I know that cream has a lot thicker of a fat content than milk does. So I would not use cream to make a soup. I would use milk. Okay. That's just going to continue to go for another little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to measure out four cups of this milk. So I, last night I completely cleaned, cleaned my kitchen and then I took out all the pots and pans and some of the ingredients I was going to need for today. And I'm like, oh, wow, it looks like I didn't even clean my kitchen. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can even like see how thick that milk is. <laughs> Again, please don't crop that out of context. So, yeah, there's like that amount of milk left in here so you pretty much can use the whole carton but don't use it all i'm going to save that for like brownies or something later so that's four cups of milk and this is still boiled bubbling away on the stove here i'm going to use this just to once again scrape up all that good stuff at the bottom you can see that I burned it because I turned it up too high instead of low, like an idiot. I'm an idiot. So yeah, I'm just gonna do my best to scrape most of that off. But if not, that's fine. I can already see it getting a lot darker, it's starting to look like a thick, chunky soup. And it's gonna get a little bit better once we get that in. And open up this beer, which I only need three quarters of a cup of, which is barely anything for this beer. So I'm going to pop that in the fridge after, and then Thomas is probably going to come out and drink it. Okay, another two minutes for that. I think we're good. We'll just start pouring this in. This always looks really cool on video. Mmm, baby. Oh, I got to throw this in now because I said mm, baby. Keep that because we're going to need to measure out the beer. And let's start whisking this. So right now, all that thick soup, we're going to dilute it once again. You can see the pot is getting very full. Just get all of that thick, soupy stuff churned up and into here. By the way, we do not want to boil this after. We're just going to simmer it for another 15 minutes or so because we don't want the milk to boil. It could burn, 
the milk solids that are in the milk could toast and it'll just get really bad and bubble over and we don't want any of that. So just a quick stir of this. Let's see, it's still very chunky, so I'm going to keep going. I haven't eaten at a lot of places in the parks. We were just talking about that, me and Colleen, before the show officially started today. I think I calculated out how many meals um, each restaurant typically has, like even like the quick service and the full service sit down places. And then I multiplied that by the number of restaurants on property. And then I divide it by, by the number of meals you would eat in a day. And I think I found you'd have to go to the parks for like 238 days straight to be able to eat every single meal at every single park and resort. So people, because people were like, oh, Tyler, you haven't eaten this, you haven't eaten that. And you know what? Somebody was like, no one said that to you. So I probably just imagined that people said that to me. Because <laughs> I often do that. Um Oh yeah, we're gonna let this simmer for another 15 minutes, basically. Yeah, I've eaten at most restaurants um, in the parks, not like hotel restaurants, but park restaurants. But I would always eat the same thing, so. Yeah, I used to do that too. I used to, um, we, w we stayed at, uh, what was it called? Uh, Art of Animation. We stayed at Art of Animation once, and I remember we were we didn't really eat at too much of the stuff in the parks. And I remember at one point we made us we made the very dumb decision of being like, let's just go back to the hotel and just eat some like pasta, because my brother just wanted like cheese cheesy pasta, and they do it really good at Art of Animation because they like will make it for you on the spot, and they you like pick all the ingredients for the pasta. It's like a buffet kind of thing, but they make it up like like, uh, like one of those omelet stations, uh -huh. but they do it with pasta. So we we just like we never ate any food in the park. We were just always eager to get back and eat at the hotel because they were like burgers and pasta. And then when I went with friends, we it was at Food and Wine, so we ate just a ton of stuff around Epcot mostly. But other than that, we still stuck to like burgers and hot dogs, like the usual garbage. And then in 2018, it was just me and my partner Thomas, and I was like, let's just let's just go for the weird stuff. Like, let's try not to even drink like Coca Cola or any soda. Like, if there's another option on the menu of like a drink or a beverage that we don't normally have, let's just go with that instead. And that was probably the best food tasting experience I had at Disney, because we just we picked restaurants, sit down restaurants that we really wanted to get some good food at that was different. Mm -hmm. I don't think we ate a single uh, like chicken nugget when we were at the parks at that point. It was great. Oh boy, these potatoes are singing. I will take them out and maybe you'll be able to hear because I'm just gonna move them around. Uh, soup is continuing to simmer with the lid on. Can you hear this? Can you hear that? Sorry about that camera knock. Okay, so these are getting there. The skin is starting to sort of um, blister, which for potatoes is real good. I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a toss. Just show you what a of course I dropped one on the floor. You can see one of these is starting to sort of like blister up the skin is starting to tighten. So that's good. Pop uh, space these back out again. Pick up that one from the floor because again, I don't need any more ants. And we're just gonna continue to broil these. Don't have to worry about like overcooking them because the inside is going to be nice and firm anyways, or nice and soft on the inside. Okay. I'm going to start preparing the steak now. So I'm just going to grab a plate. And for a steak, there's not a whole lot of prep. So this is a rib steak. Um, people try to get a steak without fat. 
Fat is flavor. So for this bad boy, you can see there's like a lot of chunks here of fat and we can always take all that off. But this cap that's here, all of this delicious fat on the outside, when that gets cooked, that's gonna become so soft and it's gonna basically be like butter um, if you cook it properly. Um, all the rest of this is like some really good marbling. So all the stuff that's in the middle here, that is going to cook out and it's just gonna melt into the rest of the meat. So if a, if a piece of steak or a piece of meat has marbling like this, where there's sort of like curvy lines of fat all inside, that's actually really good. Um, this is sort of falling apart in my hand, but it's room temperature now, which is good because that means the inside is going to cook at the same time that the outside would. If it was too cold, it wouldn't actually end up working. And you will have like a cold raw inside, whereas the outside will be a lot more cooked. I want it to be medium rare. So after I'm done uh, braising it in a pan just to get the outside all crusty. I'm gonna throw it in the oven for like five minutes maybe. Uh, I don't know if that'll make it entirely um, medium rare. Might be a little bit more cooked, but it's better that it's not undercooked. So we can be pretty liberal with some salt because most of that is gonna stay in the pan. So make sure to properly salt the front and the back. And make sure you get the sides. So I'm just going to rub this down on the plate. Make sure that the fat is completely coated in the salt. Get a bit of pepper on there as well. I don't know the pepper mill. I don't really care that much about fresh pepper. So I'm just going to use a pepper shaker. So I'm going Okay, in about five minutes, we're gonna add the rest of like the beer and the cheese and everything to the soup. So I'm just gonna start getting the pan ready for this steak. And also for the steak, we're gonna use some butter. We'll use it right at the end because that is going to make the steak have this great crust on it. I'm going to clear up the space here so I can move the camera around. How hot is my phone? Oh, it's boiling. <laughs> when we were at uh, Stage 89, we were doing a game that required people to be filming stuff on their phones as people came around, like WWNT staff had phones, and their phone was getting so hot from being out and filming so much that the phone just shut down, even though it had enough battery. So that was crazy. If you're interested in our Stage 89 event that was last year, uh, I think we're finally preparing some of the video from the event, like the Hollywood That Never Was uh, panel with a bunch of Imagineers. So that will actually be going out later this month, I believe. I had my phone shut down because it was too hot one time. Like I left it sitting in the Florida sun. And then I came Jeez. back and it, it was like, nope, I'm too hot. I took a nap. Okay, the soup is starting to get nice and soupy. It's starting to smell like itself. Again, I burned the bottom a bit too much, so it's getting little black spots. Yeah, it's getting little black spots in the soup. Normally it wouldn't be this color. <laughs> um, but whatever. Listen, if you screw things up today, it's just it's just food. You can always try again tomorrow. Pan is hot. You could literally just put your hand close to a pan and feel how hot it is. All right, let's just move this over here. Show how we're gonna sear a steak. I don't know how good that camera angle is. Okay, so we're gonna use just a small amount of oil in here. around, cut the bottom of the pan a little bit. It's nice and hot. And you're just gonna take your steak and it's sort of falling apart. Oh my God, we're gonna lay it away from you.
Sizzle is good. That means it's heated properly. And I'm just going to let that side cook for like two minutes. In the meantime, I'm just going to grab a clove or two of garlic because when I throw the butter into the pan with that steak, I want it to have some kind of flavor to it. I've got to put pepper on it. There we go. I don't normally buy organic stuff, but with garlic, you can get a gigantic clove of garlic or a giant, uh, whatever it's called, knob. Because the individual cloves are called cloves. Again, I'm not a professional chef. The only reason I started learning to cook so much is because I started working from home a lot more often, which meant I wanted to eat some much better food. So instead of eating burgers and chicken nuggets like uh, at Disney Park, I started to learn to cook. I got the Gordon Ramsay master class, which was a good decision. Just goes over some fundamentals and some pretty easy recipes. Once I learned how to make good scrambled eggs using Gordon Ramsay's recipe, I was so much better. I used, my mom used to always make eggs that were like burned basically, like completely brown, coming out of the pan. So they were even harder and grosser when they were not in the pan. Eggs are very delicate. Anyways, got some garlic. I'm just gonna grab a knife. And I'm not, I'm not even going to chop it. I'm just going to crush it. Make sure it gets opened up because the butter is going to get inside that garlic. And then all of the juices and stuff are going to come out of that. So there's our crushed garlic. Just literally smushed. This is starting to get good. You can often tell how cooked something is by the fat on the side of it. Especially with salmon, you can literally see it getting cooked from the bottom to the top. Give that a wiggle, it's coming off the bottom. So I'm just going to flip this. Oh yeah, baby. You can see it's like crusted up on the top already. These little brown chunks and spots there. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit. After this, I'm going to flip it again just to get this side a little bit better because now the pan is much hotter. And then I'm going to start basting in the rest of it. The soup is pretty much ready. Oh my god. So I'm just going to get the beer ready. So that's three quarters of a cup of beer. Most of this is going to be foam anyways, so I'll just pour it until it hits one. It's just beer. The actual recipe at Epcot has beer in it, um, but it's like, it's not even cooked enough that the alcohol would be able to sort of absorb out. So it's probably, like, if you eat too much, drink too much of it, like, you're not going to get drunk but it certainly has a pretty significant amount of alcohol. Okay. I'm gonna turn the soup up a little bit because I want it to get a little bit hotter. Steak is looking pretty good. So yeah, we're like almost done already. We'll st I mean, we'll stay on the stream afterwards just in case people are still coming by. Um, what else do we got this week? Colleen, are you able to throw up the calendar? Of course. So tonight we have Park mm. Center. Tomorrow in the morning we have Party with Pete. Pete has uh, Yeehaw Bob, is that the name? The Amazing. piano player from Port Orleans, French Quarter. And then news tonight uh, where we're going to do stuff. I don't have the thing in front of me. Um, I think we're going to do a puppet show. That should be interesting. Just Tom and I making a puppet show. Um, and, uh, 
myself. On Friday at noon, so I can sleep a little longer, I'm going to have, I'm going to craft. And we're going to make a scrapbook page, which, here's the list of things that you'll need if you want a scrapbook along with me. A 12 by 12 or 8 by 10 piece of paper, some colored paper, like construction paper, Disney paraphernalia, like maps, tickets, postcards, the, you know, pass holder, cattle up magazine thing they send you, and a glue stick, scissors, and then decorations like stickers, washi tape, stamps, stencils, ribbons, etc. And then two or three, like, four by six photos. If you don't have photos printed out, who does that? Uh, you can just have a space for them and put them in later. Uh, and then Friday night at 8, we're going to have a digital dance party. Uh, so you'll be able to send in videos of yourself dancing to our hashtag. And... Um, We'll have music playing for like two hours with uh, Cosmic Reed. On Saturday at 11, we'll have Locked In with Eric Morton. And at 9 p.m., Ride Rehab watches. What are you watching, Tyler? We're watching the Disneyland 35th anniversary. This is another weird one. Um, I think we might also watch some stuff from Tokyo. That seems pretty bizarre. Uh, that Spencer's passed us. And I don't know if we're going to continue with the Figment cartoons. We watched, like, three out of, like, the eight of them. So uh, I don't know if we're going to watch another cartoon, but we'll watch something that's short and bizarre for sure. All right, let's cut back because this steak is looking amazing. So this steak has been sitting in garlic and the butter. I basted it, which is basically spooning all of that delicious stuff over top of it. It's got this amazing crust. And I think I'm actually pretty confident enough to say that this is probably done. Oh, so the last thing I'm going to do is just uh, turn the steak onto its side. It's going to be very hard because this is halfway broken. And I'm just going to cut that fat, that cap of it. Sizzle is good. It smells amazing. The garlic mixed with that butter that's been basted on top is so good. So I'm just going to take this out of the pan, drop it onto a plate. And that steak on the plate is still cooking. That is going to continue to have its heat absorbed into the rest of it. That's why with eggs, you want to not, like if it's, if it's cooked in the pan, it's going to be overcooked on the plate. That's just like a good eats philosophy, basically. So eggs, if they're like just undercooked, that is the perfect time to throw them on a plate. Okay, so we got cheese. We got beer. Let me just pop this charger back in my phone. We got cheese. We got beer. We got Worcestershire sauce. We have Tabasco sauce. And we have salt and pepper. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to use all of this because there's some delicious Asiago cheese in there I might want to save for a pasta. So I'm going to dump like three quarters of this into it. And you can see it's like a mountain of cheese at this point. And so, again, it's on low heat. I've actually just turned it off. No, I'll keep it on low. And all this cheese, we're just going to fold it in. People don't know what folding in means. You're just literally turning it until it's incorporated on the inside of it. Folding does not mean mix. Folding just literally means, like, you're taking this section and you're folding it in. So get that cheese in there. It'll start to melt on its own. We're gonna pour in the beer now. I probably shouldn't have poured in the whole cup. That was that that was another mistake just now. Uh, I forgot I measured out a cup instead of three quarters of a cup. So we got that in there. 
Oh boy, that smells alcoholy. And now we're gonna put in some Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Just about four dashes. I don't remember how this is made. I mean, there's a ton of ingredients. It's basically like this beefy flavor. It's base. It's gonna punch up this saw so the soup a lot more. Uh, it's gonna make. Oh my god! I just spilled a whole bunch of <laughs> soup on the stove. <laughs> don't do that. Don't be like me. I mean, watch this cooking show, but don't do exactly what I do. So yeah, uh, Worcestershire sauce is gonna add like this beefy flavor. They're like in addition to salty, sweet, sour. We've basically come up with like the world and like food scientists and stuff. I've come up with another one called umami. That's that feeling when like savoriness, like you can tell the difference between eating a candy versus eating a steak. Like a steak makes you feel full. It's, it's like you ate a whole meal. So that sort of beefy flavor is gonna get infused into the soup. It's going to really make it feel like you're at a barbecue. Tabasco sauce, I've had the mistake of putting in too many dashes. So I'm just going to add three, maybe a little more. Uh, Tabasco goes a long way. It's spicy, but we're not adding so much that it's going to be like a significant kick. Oh my God, that steak looks amazing. So I'm just stirring that in. And we're just going to make sure everything is stirred, the cheese is melted and incorporated in. Should really be using the whisk for this. This is probably fine though. You can now when I drag it up, you can see it's all cheesy. We got some chunks in there. That's fine though. And here's something else great in the pan from the, from the steak. That garlic is completely roasted now. It's so soft. I might actually crush that up and mix it with some butter and make like garlic bread later. Like save that. Even all of this like soupy mixture, you could probably save that if you want to pop it into something later. Like we have, we actually keep bacon fat in a jar just because when you're cooking stuff, it's a fat, basically. It's its own cooking fat. You don't need oil. Just take a little scoop of that and put it in. The soup is pretty much done. I'm going to take it off the heat, and I'm going to take the potatoes out of the oven. And those have been roasting this entire time. I'm just going to give one a quick poke with a fork. Oh, yeah. That went in super smooth. The outside is crispy, but the inside is so soft I can pierce it with my fork. I'm gonna oh, toss these. They, there's, they smell so good. The rosemary is so aromatic. I just want to clarify as well, like you can make this recipe at home. I am not what I would call a good chef. Sorry, I'm not an excellent chef. I learned just like anyone else does. There's tons of free things on YouTube, like the Tasty YouTube channel, where you can learn how to just go over some basics of how to cook. Oh my God, that steak looks amazing. So I am actually just going to plate this. So let's get started. Let's take a bit of these potatoes. Where'd I put the, I literally just had it in my hand. Oh my God, I cannot be trusted. There it is. Get a few of these potatoes on there. And that steak, I'm just gonna cut it in half really quick just to see what it looks like. Oh, this is perfect. And take that chunk of fat off just because it might be too tough to eat. I'm not using a cutting board. I probably should have. I'm just going to slice this. You want to slice against the grain so that all the fibers of the beef are 
available for you to chew on rather than having the knife do it. Sorry, I said that wrong. If you cut against the grain, it just makes it easier to eat, basically. Let's take another big old chunk of this steak. Lay that in there. And lastly, just get a bowl of this soup. Oh my god, it is so cheesy. And boom, that's it. We're done. Good. So that is how to make Epcot's Le Cellier cheddar cheese soup, boomtown. Steak, roasted potatoes. Let's give this a try. Holy crap. Amazing. Damn it, this is so good. I did not put in too much beer. That was the right amount. Mm. This is the part of cooking shows you don't see where, like, everyone eats it later. This is smoky and savory. It tastes like you just put, like, a whole, like, barbecue meal in your mouth, essentially. You got a bunch of delicious bacon. It's just the right amount of chunky. I think if we had used the celery and the quarter inch chops of vegetable uh, onions in it, it would have been a little bit too chunky. You would have had to chew on stuff. But this is just so rich and delicious. Hey, you make garlic butter? Oh, I, not now. Like, I would do that later. <laughs> um, just because I don't have any bread. I literally have no bread in my house right now. The roasted potatoes. Let me see if I can like do a cross section or something of this. Nope, it was way too crispy on the outside and way too soft on the inside that it broke. But yeah, soft on the inside, garlic. Mm. Almost crunchy on the outside. That was amazing. Let me dive into the steak. Instagram says, now lift up the hat and give the rat credit. <laughs> I, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Give me one second and I will make this joke work. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm like, I don't have any like rat toys in my house. This is this is not gonna work. <laughs> this is not gonna work. There we go. All right, now <laughs> does it does it not look more obvious that I have something in my hat? <laughs> okay, I oh god guys, I was getting help from my little chef. Oh God, there he is. <laughs> that was like, ah, whatever. That was, that was not worth the joke. I didn't even remember how the steak tasted. It's a little bit more cooked. I'd say this is medium, more than medium rare. But it's still really good. Snap, I almost swore again. This is not even a steak knife, so I'm just gonna take this whole chunk. Mm. The chat is hungry. I honestly, I woke up at 10 and I have not eaten until now. That's how hungry I am. What time, mm. where, are you, what time zone are you in? What time is it there? It's 12.20 here. Okay. I'm Eastern time, Toronto. Oh my god, this is such a good meal. I need to... Anyways, I guess uh, someone's using like a chainsaw outside. I don't know how loud that is. 
Thank you for watching Cooking with Tyler. I've been Tyler. <laughs> I mean, I still am Tyler. It's not like once this is done, I'm going to cease being Tyler. Uh, although, wouldn't that be crazy? What if, oh my God, these potatoes are so good. What if like Oprah, like as soon as she leaves, she's like, I kill, I've been Oprah. And then she just like turns into someone else after. <laughs> Sorry, I got so caught up in eating. This is not how cooking shows normally go. Anyway, so once again, I was cooking the Epcot Le Cellier uh, bacon cheddar cheese soup that you can find in the Canada Pavilion. If you don't want to try making this at home, go to Epcot. I believe the soup was still at the refreshment port, which was that awful drinks stand that's just to, like, to the right side of the Canada Pavilion, near where those awful bathrooms used to be. Um, go there. I think they still have that soup in small quantities. I don't know how this means small quantity. Uh, but you can also just go to Le Cellier. It's a good steak place. You can get this delicious soup. Or you can do what I do, just literally make the soup at home. I'm just going to turn the camera again here to show you how much soup there is. This is about like a 12-quart pot, which is like 14 cups. And... I, that's going to last me forever. Like, if I put that into individual containers based on portions, there's probably, like, 20 portions of it in here. This is going to last a long time. Same thing with these potatoes. Like, I'm not going to eat them all. And they're going to definitely go to a good use. I'm going to keep eating this steak, though. I definitely cooked it way too long. But that was good. Oh, my God, it's so buttery. Is there any other, like, last-minute questions in the chat? Or is everyone just, like, drooling and they just want to go eat now? People are hungry. Uh, yeah, people say thank you. Um... Mm. They're hungry. And Chainsaw is Canadian. I don't know how I feel. I understand that, but, you know. What? I don't know. They're like a chainsaw. How Canadian? Hmm. Because of lumberjacks. Oh, okay. Uh, someone asked, can you freeze mm. the soup in portions? Yes. This soup is definitely freezable. Just pop it into a, like, a freezer-safe container. Um, you could store it. I think it lasts basically forever. It doesn't really go bad. Just before you take... I would not use margarine instead of butter because the margarine gets, like, oily when it's frozen and then reheated. Like, remember, you're this is already cooked, so you don't need to, like, I would just simmer it if you ever need to reheat it up again. Before you take it out of, the, or before you eat it, take it out of the freezer, like, the day before. Let it thaw out, and then pop it into, like, the microwave on, like, 50%, like, in power instead of 100%, just because you want it to slowly warm up rather than just getting blasted with heat. But yeah, you can freeze it. I freeze it all the time, just because it's it keeps longer, and you can... As long as you know you're going to want some soup the next day or two. Pardon me. You can always just reheat it up. I use a rice cooker, and I put it on cook for, like, five minutes, and then I leave it on the warm setting. Or, like, the night before, pop it into a rice cooker and leave it on warm until, like, the next morning. Like, it's not going to get too hot, and it won't burn your house down. I would double-check that, though. Like a slow cooker, you could definitely reheat it back in just by popping it on for like two hours. Um, but I don't know about a rice cooker on warm setting. It should be fine. I don't think there's going to be a problem with that. Hmm. Someone wants to know which train company passes by where you live. What train company? Yeah. That's an oddly specific question. I shouldn't put a steak in my mouth before I can answer. Uh, the rail is for a thing called Go Trains. 
It's just like the next form of transit above buses and subway. Um, it's like a rapid train system. So it only makes major stops, but it goes all the way from like, like Barrie, which is a city very north of Toronto, all the way down to Toronto. Um, so yeah, it's a big train system. It goes a really fast, one of those light rail type trains. Uh, and then during the nighttime, once those trains are done, it's used by the, the CN Railway, which is just Canadian National Railway, um, to like ship cargo and freight and stuff like that. People don't know that's the CN Tower in Toronto. Uh, the CN is the company Canadian National. They own the railway. They own the tower as well. So that's why it's called the CN Tower. Uh, someone wants to good. know if you do curbside pickup. <laughs> Honestly, if you're in Toronto, message me. Or if you're in Richmond Hill, message me. Actually, no. No one should be giving food to each other. <laughs> I offered delivery, but it's going to take a long time. Someone else wants also to know if you're wearing PJ pants. I don't know why you'd ask that. But yes, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I 100% got out of bed. And did the show. <laughs> mm. I can share what shirt I'm wearing though, because I'm always wearing a different shirt. Today's shirt is Sploosh Canyon. It says I puked on a lady at Sploosh Canyon. In my comic, I had to make a fake t-shirt uh, and draw a character being on Splash Mountain. So I instead named it Sploosh Canyon. <laughs> This is actually the same art that I used for the recent Splash Mountain episode of Ride Rehab, just because I already had it ready. I guess I could stand here another few minutes if people want to ask questions and stuff. I mean, I don't know when the park's going to be open, but... We don't know. Someday? Uh, they're talking about trains. Uh, at least you're wearing I like pants. trains. I mean, if I took my pants off, nobody would know. I should have been in my boxers. That would have been even funnier. Or like a jockstrap. Is that okay? Can I say the word jockstrap I mean, without it so... being adult? <laughs> they exist. Uh, my other stick is so big. How cold is it in Canada right now? It's actually pretty reasonable. Um, in Celsius, it's like maybe 10 or 12 degrees. 20 is like summer, zero is freezing. So it's right in the middle. It's like a little bit nippy outside. Okay, so 10 degrees Celsius is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So people know. Yeah, that means nothing. <laughs> that means, honestly, that means nothing to me. I, I know, have no idea. I know, it'll mean something to the Americans. <laughs> Celsius means nothing to them. What is, what is like freezing? Like, what is snow? Like, zero degrees in Canada means snow. Doesn't that make so, so much like, sense? Uh, 32. Yeah. 32 degrees is freezing. Okay, so two, 20 here is summer, which is what it's normally like in Florida. So what is, what is summer weather for Americans in Fahrenheit? Um, like... I mean, what would really be considered hot is like 100 degrees. Florida in the summer, it's like 100 degrees. So 100 and then 50 is 50 is what like 10. Is 10. But so you said 20 degrees is like summer in Canada. That's 68 degrees. Yeah. So imagine it being, you know, 30 degrees hotter than that. Okay. So, like, it's 90 degrees outside today in Florida. So that's 32 degrees Celsius. Speaking of 90 degrees, if you haven't watched The Goes Wrong Show, go do that. The idea is they do a play of the week, but something goes wrong every time. So in the episode called 90 Degrees, they're trying to perform a play about the Tennessee heat. 
in like the 1980s. But the idea is that the construction team built the set at a 90 degree angle. So all the cameras are tilted sideways and all the actors are trying to continue to do the scene sitting at a table while stuff's just like falling sideways and their ties like dangling like that and people are falling from the ceiling and everything. You should go watch it. Uh, they want to if know what you're going to cook next. Well. Um, I don't know if this is going to be more than one episode. Do, <laughs> so, Do you want it to be? I think uh, if people email me, Tyler at www.com with a suggestion of what I should cook next time, I will make it. There it should be Disney Park for you, though. It should be a dish or a platter or a dessert of some kind that is synonymous with the Disney parks or is made in the Disney parks. Ooh, you know, it'd be fun. The Star Wars one. But I think Nick does that on his cooking show. He cooks out of the Star Wars cookbook. He did that last time. Nick is going to be cooking on... Let me, I can't uh, see the calendar. Oh, but no one can see me, so I can get up and walk around. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Nick will be cooking at 11 a.m. on the 14th, which is next Tuesday. I don't know what he's going to make. But people like food, so. Yeah. People like cooking shows. Oh, I'm going. People like cooking shows. Unless you're my family. In which case, even though your family member is on a live TV show every single, almost every single day, they don't come and watch any of them. Despite them being in a playlist available for anybody to watch. My mom, I like calling out my family. My mom commented in the chat, so I don't know if she watched the whole time, but she definitely watched part of it. Oh, that's lovely. Sometimes she'll text Hi, me to like, tell me about our volume or something. I'm sure one of my family members will be like, why are you talking about us on the internet? It's not appropriate. If you don't have a good relationship with your family, it's not appropriate. <laughs> I seriously doubt any of them are watching. If they are, though, they will contact me, and then I'll know that they were watching. They'll let you know. This just looks like eating with Tyler. Like, anyone coming in now will just assume, like, I made a bunch of food, and now I'm just eating it, which I sort of am. Mandy says, um, I like watching someone else make a mess in their house. Oh, my God. You know what? I am not touching any of this until, like, an hour from now. <laughs> like... This is so much dishes to have to clean up. Oh, God. Keep that first garlic. Oh, my God. That garlic looks so good. Save that. My mom said she didn't watch all of it, but it looks great. That's okay. Thanks, Mom. Oh, my God. Sorry, I just picked up the garlic with my bare fingers, and then I licked them, and the flavor is just amazing. Here's something you can do. Cut a garlic in half. And then pop that, uh, spray, like, put some oil in it. Pop that in the oven, roasted garlic. And you can put that on, like, a chip, a chip, like a piece of toast or something. Mix it into a butter. Throw some cheese on it. Pop that back in the oven. That's all. Anybody else got right. any questions? Yeah. Do you, do you have anything last minute? Somebody in Facebook said you should cook something from the Italy Pavilion. Um, on Instagram, they said, yeah, you should do more. Here's a fun fact. Um, I had to buy all this myself. So <laughs> join up as a member of Wigs. All right. WDWNT. That's patreon.com slash WDWNT. WIG stands for WDWNT Interglobe Society. Those are the people who support us on Patreon. Can access post shows, past post shows. We have a bunch of Disney memorabilia and like old attraction guides and like production guides of how to like work at Disney or how to build a ride or like feasibility studies. Those are all being scanned in HD and uploaded. So if you don't have a lot of really good Disney content, including more of whatever this is, then go to patreon.com slash WDWNT to join up as part of WIGS, our WDWNT Interglobe Society.
Anything? It helps support this show, every other show that's happening. If you don't want to join Wigs, you can donate via YouTube. Uh, anytime you're watching one of our shows, we appreciate donations during this trying time. Uh, someone else asked, are there any other Disney recipes that you use at home often? Um, no, there wasn't anything in the pot. Oh, actually, there is. Um, the honey chicken uh, lo mein that I ate at Yak and Yeti. They make this, like, um, crispy battered chicken, and then it's in, like, a soy sauce, like, a sticky soy sauce honey combination, and it comes with a served with lo mein or some rice. That's delicious. I would make that, but that's not really like, that's like, Yak and Yeti is like a regular restaurant chain. Like you can get, eat that anywhere. That's not like quintessentially Disney or like the bacon cheddar cheese soup, which is like an Epcot thing specifically. So yeah, there isn't really any recipes that I make that are Disney specific. When I think Disney specific recipes, I think a hot dog with leftover mac and cheese on it. <laughs> Which, by the way, is disgusting. Don't ever go to, I think it's like Friar's Nook in Fantasyland. It's like the window that's open only like half the year. I almost, like, that was disgusting. Mac and cheese at Disney is disgusting. I think they did like a hamburger too. At like. I had a hamburger with like brisket on top of it, that was disgusting as well. That's way too much meat. Mm. All right, well, that's it in the chat. Okay. Then I'm going to say thank you so much for watching Cooking with Tyler. I'm Tyler. And if you didn't enjoy Cooking with Tyler, I've been Nathan Hartman. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That was me. Never mind. I'm going to throw I'm the sorry, schedule Nathan. back up. Uh, party yeah. Center tonight. Tomorrow, Party with Pete. And Newt's tonight. Friday, I'm going to be scrapbooking. And we're going to have a digital dance party. Saturday, Locked In with Eric Morton and Ride Rehab Watches. And on Sunday, during the day, we're going to do Easter watch-alongs in Tokyo. Like, they do shows and stuff for Easter. So we're going to watch some of those. And then that night will be the second episode of our new show, Pressing Issues. Okay, say goodbye, Tyler. Goodbye, Tyler. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a good day, and we will see you tomorrow. Make good food. Eat good food. <laughs>